It's time to start with section number two from chapter five, which is the data analysis or rate data collection and analysis. Now, this part right here is about differential reactors. We've seen before the batch reactor analysis, which applies to, of course, the batch reactor, CSTR, continuous tier tank reactors, and P of R's, which are plug flow reactors. And what happens with this? This applies in general for PBR. We want to analyze the PBR rate of reaction. And probably you've seen that we got this special symbol here, this comma here, is because this is based on the weight or mass of the catalyst and not the volume of the reactor. So that's why we need to use another uh, type of reactor, the differential reactor. Let me explain it once again, the methodology we're going to follow. So the first thing we do is postulate a rate law. It's essentially the same as we've done before. And select the reactor type. Of course, this time we choose another one. But we still do the same thing about processing the data in terms of measured data. Partial pressure here is also very common. Uh, simplify as possible. You got a reactant in excess. The concentration might be considered as constant. So you can or you may use the excess method. Now, if this uh, initial mole fraction of A is small, you can do this, and I actually recommend it, because it will simplify your model and your life. Now, we continue to calculate this as a function of either concentration of A or partial pressure of A. I recommend both. Actually, it's easier, this one, but many times you get data with partial pressure. So, whatever comes handy to you, do it. Then solve and apply a uh, linear variation, or a regression, is essentially give this model as a function of concentration or pressure pressure, wherever you choose. Then you choose a model, use a non-linear variation, or a, if you think it's linear, do a linear regression, and hopefully it fits, which is the God of fitness, or correlation of God's fitness. Be sure that your R to the square is high. And yeah, that's everything guys, very simple. Let's continue with this. I don't want to spread the video. I think you can do it in one whole video. The differential reactor, PBR especially, it's typically for solid fluid phases. So that's why we haven't seen batch or CSTR or PFR because they have only one phase. This is two phase. The only reactor we've seen or that switched this description is pack bed reactors because the catalyst bed is solid and the fluid is either the gas inlet or the gas outlet, which will be the product. Uh, the concentration or pressure pressure I use, yeah, you may use either it's concentra concentration of A or partial pressure of A. So, yeah, now uh, the conversion will be usually very small because it's very small our reactor, so we can say it's constant. Concentration of A is constant, which of course mathematically it is not. But theoretically, uh, sorry, in practice, you may consider it as constant. And that's very important because that will be a huge part on our model. It's also gradientless and especially uniform, you know, the radiant, the radius, etc. The analysis is done on the product rather than the reactants. This is the first time reactants will not be analyzed, but products, this is very important. We can apply the excess method and we will apply it if given more than one reactant, so be sure on that. We got CA and CB. Well, sorry about the beta. Use this in excess and then use this in excess and continue. Now, differential reactor PBR. We have it here. Mm, yes, we have the inlets. We got the exit, which normally I don't know why the zero will sound like outlet and E. I don't know whatever exponent, mathematical exponent, but be sure to be in the same uh, nomenclature as we do, zero means initial and E will be exit. And of course the generation, no accumulation, that's why zero. So you have this, send out this to the right and this dividing, you get this. And yeah, you can either use flows or concentrations, I prefer to use concentrations, take them here. And if you want to use conversion, well, set it up here. But, as I told you before, we want to base our 
uh, equations on the product so that's why I'm going to use this here as here what does that mean is the flow of the product which is actually the conversion of the initial convert uh, initial flow so this is equals to this or if you want to change this is the concentration of the product times the volumetric flow rate always dividing by that catalyst mass and uh, yeah we're done that's actually our model you can use either this one here or this one here I think it's most common one this one because of the volumetric flow and the concentration but if you have the flow go ahead uh, after having different values of the rate of reaction you will need various values of R of A you can calculate them here with respect of either I don't know concentration uh, use a linear regression and use got of fitness to get to know if the R to the square is near or good or if you can apply that model or if it's not applicable and sorry guys there's no more theory we need to do practice I told you before that this uh, chapter in general is more about doing the problems uh, at the same time rather than just applying theory because if you are studying and studying and studying theory well that's cool but you need to eventually go and apply it on something and this is the case so I'm going to see this example in the well it's a huge example I'm going to see it and post it on my web page here go to the courses go to reactor engineering course you can go to solve problems section here and go to chapter 5 or even if you need more well I have a lot of chapters there but if you want to see this example go here and you will find it probably in this section number 2 so that's everything uh, this is the end of the topic that was the differential reactor it's actually very simple probably guys you're thinking that I'm going pretty fast but essentially you just need this equation calculate the rate of reaction for many concentrations as possible or delta W whatever you want go 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 put it on your Excel or actually in the polymath and you will get that regression so yeah let's make this final video go to the end What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.